Just by looking at it, you would probably assume it'd be located in England or somewhere in Europe, but it's actually right on the coast of Massachusetts. The place was built by John Hayes Hammond Jr. from 1926 to 1929 to house his collection of medieval art and architectural features. I had been to Hammond Castle as a kid, but only had vague recollections of a drawbridge, pipe organ, and indoor pool. Before I went back, I wanted to know who would build such a place and why. John Hammond Jr. was an inventor known as the father of radio control, and he is credited with more than 800 foreign and domestic patents. Born in San Francisco in 1888, he spent his childhood in South Africa and England, following his father's career as a mining engineer. The family returned to the United States by the turn of the century. At the age of 12, Hammond accompanied his father on a business trip to Thomas Edison's laboratory in West Orange, New Jersey. He asked so many questions, Edison gave him a personal tour of his complex and became a mentor to young Jack. The two would remain in contact for the rest of Edison's life. When Hammond became interested in radio waves in college, Edison introduced him to Alexander Graham Bell. Bell would also mentor John Hammond and remain friendly with him over the years. After graduating Yale in 1910, Hammond knew he wanted to be an inventor like Edison, but wasn't sure which field to get into. So he took a job in the U.S. Patent Office, where he found his answer in radio. He began experimenting with radio remote control on the grounds of his family's estate in Gloucester. One of his experiments included terrorizing local fishermen and tourists by successfully steering small unmanned boats around the harbor years before anyone had heard of such a thing. His work also included radio-guided torpedoes, missiles, and other top-secret weaponry. In 1914, he sent an experimental yacht on a 120-mile round trip between Gloucester and Boston. Hammond also conducted some of the earliest experiments in FM broadcasting and invented single-dial radio tuning. When Hammond was a child, his family moved to England, where he became fascinated with the castles he saw growing up. Medieval history became one of his interests. He never outgrew this fascination. With 400 plus U.S. patents under his belt, he amassed quite a fortune and finally was able to build his own unique castle. The time came in 1925 when he secretly married Gloucester divorcee Irene Fenton Reynolds. A year later, construction began on the castle for a cost of $500,000. It took three years to build and when the castle was completed in 1929, Hammond christened it Abadia Mare, Latin for Abbey by the Sea. This was because of the Great Hall's resemblance to a medieval church. When it comes to John Hammond's personal life, it's hard to separate urban legend from fact. I had heard about his interest in the occult and spiritualism, and also about his collection of artifacts including the skull of one of Christopher Columbus's crewmen. It's also said that Hammond kept his father's corpse in the basement for years in an attempt to reanimate it. Did Dr. Hammond really try to raise the dead here? Today the castle is run as a museum. There is plenty to see around the castle before you even get inside. The outside grounds have a gothic feel with a decor ranging from stone gargoyles to numerous tombstones and grave markers from Europe. Hammond's wishes were to remain buried in a tomb he designed covered with poison ivy and mummified cats facing out to sea. However, in 2008, against his wishes, his body was removed from its original resting place and moved inside the cat garden near the castle drawbridge. The drawbridge acted as an entryway into the castle. The guests were usually taken downstairs to the Great Hall or to Hammond's office, which today is the lobby area. The Great Hall served as a living room for the Hammonds. It was designed to look like a 13th century French cathedral. Guests of the Great Hall include Cardinal Cushing, members of the Rockefeller family, and actress Ethel Barrymore, Drew Barrymore's great aunt. This room is designed to house Hammond's massive organ. The pipe organ starts at the floor below and extends eight stories up into the towers. Unfortunately, the organ no longer works due to lack of upkeep. Most of Hammond's collection was sold over the years to pay for the overhead of the castle. However, still in the Great Hall exists one prize piece from Hammond's personal collection. This is believed to be the skull of one of Christopher Columbus's crewmen. In 1934, John Hammond Jr. boarded his yacht with friends and took a four-month trip following a sketch of Columbus's voyage to the West Indies. The goal was to accumulate anything historically linked to Christopher Columbus. Along with a couple of benches, Hammond returned home with this skull. My favorite room in the whole castle is the indoor courtyard. The Hammonds call this room the patio. The idea was to give the impression of stepping out of a church and into the middle of a medieval village built from Roman ruins. Dr. Hammond was able to control the climate in this room by a sun system installed overhead. The sun system can make a cloudy day sunny or add artificial moonlight to those dark gloomy nights. 
also installed overhead are pipes that run the length of the sailing designed to produce rain. The patio room could imitate anything from a gentle shower to a torrential downpour. When the Hammonds lived here, the pool was usually dyed green, using a chemical agent from one of John's inventions. The chemical was also used by down pilots to mark their location for pickup at sea. Dr. Hammond designed an optical illusion in the pool's construction. It looks like there's a shallow end, which even changes its location depending on where you're standing. However, the depth is eight and a half feet on all sides. There's even a lever attached to the pool that can change 30,000 gallons of fresh water into seawater. Also in the courtyard is a great example of Jack's sense of humor. He had a full-size nude statue of himself made. The only stipulation came from his wife, Irene. Her idea was the appropriately placed fig leaf on the statue. There are some places I would have liked to have seen during my self-guided tour of Hammond Castle that were off-limits. I didn't get to see the dungeon. From what I understand, it may be part of the Halloween tour, but I'd much rather have saw the castle during the day. Also, I would have liked to have seen the master bedroom, but it was stipulated in John Hammond's will that it be left off of the tour. However, the master bedroom does overlook the courtyard in the balcony of the French storefront. Mrs. Hammond was a shy recluse who would often lock herself in the bedroom when there were too many guests at the castle. I was happy to find the room with the vanishing doors. The guest rooms were designed by Mrs. Hammond to escape the dreary feel of the castle. Pastel partygoers would wake up in this room to find at first glance no doorway or exit. Imagine waking up in this room in the middle of the night trying to find a way out. There's so much more to see inside the world that John Hammond created at Hammond Castle. It's worth taking your own tour and seeing it for yourself. Each time I've gone, I notice something unique in the architecture or something different from his historical collection that is either on display or part of the castle itself. Next time you're in Gloucester, Massachusetts, be sure to check out this medieval funhouse from the imagination of an eccentric inventor with a great sense of humor.